My name is Della Barbado, and I am the Director of Education for the Native Prairies Association of Texas. And here we are at beautiful Deer Park Prairie, about 30 miles east of downtown Houston. So today we are going to teach you how to set up an INAT project for your school campus or any nature spot near you. You can use this iNaturalist project to keep a running count of the wildlife and plant species for the City Nature Challenge or beyond. Hi, my name is Jaime Gonzalez. I am with the Nature Conservancy in Texas and I'm here to show you how to create a project for your school using the iNaturalist platform. You can use this to record observations on your campus either doing the City Nature Challenge or as an ongoing project. And we hope that uh, you'll consider making a project for your campus. You, you can uh, record all the biodiversity, all the living things that live on your campus, even create a checklist or a field guide for your campus. So the first step in this process is to go ahead and create a shape for your campus using Google Earth. We'll use that shape later in iNaturalist to create the project and to delineate the boundaries where you want to make your observations. So I'm gonna go ahead and share screen now, and then we will show you how this is done. Okay, I have the um, Google Earth application open. It's a free application. Um, it is something that um, we use a lot in conservation. Um, and I um, had a teacher uh, email me and say, hey, we'd like a project done. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in their information, a wonderful uh, school down in the Port ISD, just southeast of Houston. So we're zooming into the campus here at Jenny Reed. So I can see kind of where the campus um, is located. And now I just need to make a shape of the campus. So I'm gonna go ahead and I am gonna come up here. You can see where my, my cursor is. I'm going to, first of all, I'm gonna show you something that's really cool. And that is that um, with Google Earth, what you have is you have this, this historical imagery icon here, this clock function. So if we were to go back in time uh, on this campus, you'd see that this campus used to be very wild. So I'm gonna hit this clock function and you can see the slider here in Harris County and in some other local counties, the record goes way back. So let's take a look. We're gonna go ahead and slide this back to the year 1944 and what you can see is Jenny Reed is no longer there, right? In fact, the entire community is not there. What you have here, uh, if, you d if you don't know what you're looking at, is you are looking at a very wild and diverse ecosystem. Uh, these roads are not here, by the way. Um, what you're looking at is a wild prairie. To the south over here, it looks like rice farms, uh, just because of the levee system that's there. So you can also explore how land changes over time with Google Earth, but we're mostly here to make a shape file. So I'm going to get us back to the current time, zoom back in, and now I am going to create the shape file. Now, if the Google Earth tilts on you like that, just go ahead and um, hit the R button and it'll make it flat once again. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to hit the polygon button here. And I'm going to name this Jenny Reed. That's the name of the polygon. And now what I'm going to do is I I'm going to move this over a little bit. And now I'm going to just draw the shape of the campus. So I'm just going to draw this shape. This looks like a fence line. Here's the other edge. And I'm just going to bring it around just like this. And I'll be kind of generous there. OK, so that's on my shape. Uh, what I want to do is I just want to then uh, hit OK. And now what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to export this layer. And so the layer here is down here, Jenny Reed, and you're gonna have to export it because then you're gonna have to use it for step number two, which is to create your project in iNaturalist. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on my layer, in this case, Jenny Reed, I'm gonna save the place and it's gonna give me a couple of different options, either a KMZ, or a KML. I'm gonna go ahead and pick a KML file because that's the file format that gets used in iNaturalist. I'm gonna go ahead and put the word elementary on here. 
and I'm going to save it to my desktop. And now we're ready to start the process of creating a school campus iNaturalist project. Okay, so you've made the shape of your school campus or a local park in step one using Google Earth. Now you're going to create a project in the iNaturalist app so that you can record what you find on your campus. And you can use it for City Nature Challenge, but you can use it also as an ongoing project. So what we're going to do is we're going to first go to iNaturalist, and then we're going to show you step by step how you set up a project. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. Okay, the first thing you'll need to do is actually go to iNaturalist.org. Now you can sign into iNaturalist.org using uh, Facebook, using a Gmail account, and other ways so you don't have to create necessarily a brand new uh, user profile and all that stuff. I use iNaturalist a lot, so I'm already signed in um, and I have my account. Uh, you can kind of tell people who you are. You'll keep track of your own observations. You'll get help with observations, all of those things. But to create this new iNaturalist um, project for your school or local uh, park, what you'll first need to do is you'll need to create a place so that you can have a uh, kind of a delineated boundary for where you want to collect observations. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the more category here at the top on the toolbar. You're going to go to places. And then what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down to add a new place. So we know that we're going to make for this um, demonstration a new project for Jenny Reed Elementary School in Laporte. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a name. Now at this point, um, just go ahead and type a place name. And let's see if it's going to pull up Texas. And it does Texas USA. Um, and let's see if it even does Laporte. It doesn't. So I'm just going to go ahead and put Texas. Okay, And then I'm going to, for place name, there's not a really great category for schools yet, which uh, I hope to. Uh, see in the future. So I'm just going to put point of interest. Now, there's the important part. You got to add your shape file so it'll know where to collect, where you can collect observations. So I'm going to choose file and I'm going to go to the correct folder and I'm going to upload that KML file. Now, remember, don't use a KMZ file, which is another option to export from Google Earth your shape. Use a KML file because that's the format that you need for iNaturalist. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then I'm going to go ahead and save this place. All right, there it is. It's in the place. Now, what we're going to have to do is make that project. So I'm going to go ahead and click up here, and I'm going to click on where my uh, profile is. I'm going to go down to projects. Now, this isn't really intuitive, so just know that you have to scroll down to start a new project. So I wish that they'd put the button at the top, but it's not. So I'm going to click on there. And what we want to do is do a collection project right here. So I'm going to hit get started. I'm going to put the name Jenny Reed ES Wild. Okay, and you can change that later on. Now, what I did, and you don't have to do this, but if you want to, if you're a little bit more artistic, you can create a project banner and a project icon. I, went ahead and did that. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this file. So got my graphics here. Okay, there's my Jenny Reed banner. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the icon in. All right, and I size these to um, the proper dimensions that are shown right here, 72 by 72 for the icon and 760 pixels by 320 pixels for the banner. All right. So now I'm going to type in here a description of what this project all, is all about. This project is intended to catalog the biodiversity of Jenny Reed Elementary School in Laporte, 
ISD. Okay, and I'll I'll work with the teacher to, to really firm that up. Okay, it's a collection project type. When you come down here, what you want to do is you want to include places. So I'm going to go ahead and type in our new place that we just created, Jenny Reed Elementary School. There it is. So that's included. You can include users. So if you have users that um, that have expressed an interest, you can include them here, but you can always add them later on. Okay. Now down here, what I would suggest is I would suggest research grade, needs ID, and casual. And casual is not clicked on immediately. That means that any grade of observation that um, you want to put in. So if you know nothing about wildlife or nothing about plants, I would go ahead and click casual. People will help you identify this stuff, but if you don't click casual, you, you have to reach a, a certain other level. Um, and then the media type, um, I would put any here because you can use sound or photo or, or anything. And I would also um, go ahead and write over here where it says establishment means. I would, I would include any. If you want to um, be inclusive of anything living on your campus or anything in a park, whether it's native or indigenous, or if it's introduced or exotic, this will allow you to capture everything. Okay, and what we're going to do is you can either time limit it so for a certain amount of time, but we want to make a project that can build over the years. So I'm just going to put any and uh, and then you're done. So I'm going to hit this. And later on, you can make people administrators, managers, they're different categories. So you can share some of the management of this project with others. So once you save it, and it's starting to save here, then what you'll have is you'll have a new project to take a look at. And it's taking just a little bit of time. So let's just give it a second. Okay, here it is. It's ready to use, Jenny Reed ES Wild Project. Now, once you start making observations, uh, this will populate with the observations, the observers and other uh, pieces of information. So let me just show you another project that I have for my own neighborhood. I wanted to find out what was happening in my neighborhood. And here's one of the, the cool things. It doesn't matter who's making the observations. If it's made in that boundary, it'll show up. So I have not made all the observations in my neighborhood, but let me go ahead and show you. Knollwood Village Wild, which is my personal one. Here we go. When you click on it, what you'll find is it'll show you the most observations, most species. It'll show you all the recent observations that, and I haven't seen this citrine forktail, which is very cool. It'll show you the number of species. So here's one cool thing, like in our neighborhood, which is just a normal neighborhood in Houston here, we have over 400 species that collectively people have observed. We have 26 observers and 229 people have helped us identify what we're seeing. So we have 10 times the number of people who have just volunteered to help us identify all these things. We can make uh, a neighborhood checklist, field guide, that kind of thing. We can share this with people. I'm gonna do a, a nature ramble here with some of my neighbors uh, in the next few weeks. I'm gonna share this with them as a way of getting them to really kind of uh, appreciate the biodiversity, but also get them to be community scientists and do this as well. All right, we hope that you can join us for the City Nature Challenge coming up, and we hope that you will explore your campus or your school by using iNaturalist. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Janice Walden, president of Friends of Don Green here at the Don Green Nature Park, 6009 Cypress Street. We're so excited that you're interested in the City Nature Challenge. It's gonna happen right here at the Don Green Nature Park. Yeah. The City Nature Challenge is a perfect opportunity for students, for scouts, and homeschool kids because it happens from a Friday to a Monday. So you can prepare your students to do it on the weekend when they're at home. Plants are really important because they attract the native insects that have been living here for thousands of years together with them. And you can bring some of these plants to your campus and then they will then attract those insects, which will then attract the whole ecosystem, which includes the grasshoppers and the birds.